New scoop just dropped. GTA 6 gears up for the last leg of development, with Rockstar calling back its staff to the office full time. This intel's straight from Bloomberg journalist Jason Schreier, fresh in his latest Bloomberg piece. Today, we're diving deep into what Schreier shared. Known as a trusted voice in the gaming sphere, let's unpack his insights. Let's not waste time any longer and dive right into Jason Schreier's article. Grand theft automaker Rockstar Games asks workers to return to office five days a week. Rockstar Games, a division of Take-Two Interactive Software, will ask employees to return to the office five days a week beginning in April, as the video game maker enters the final stages of development on its next game, the hotly anticipated Grand Theft Auto 6. In an email to staff on Wednesday, reviewed by Bloomberg, Rockstar head of publishing Jen Kolber said the decision was made for productivity and security reasons. The company has faced several security breaches, including a massive dump of early footage from the new Grand Theft Auto and an early trailer that leaked in December. Kolber wrote that the company also found tangible benefits from in-person work. Making these changes now puts us in the best position to deliver the next Grand Theft Auto at the level of quality and polish we know it requires, along with a publishing roadmap that matches the scale and ambition of the game," she wrote. Return to office mandates have been a hot topic across various industries since the pandemic forced myriad employees to work from home. More recently, many employers have asked staff to return to the office for two or three days a week. A study last month found that remote work did not have an impact on productivity. The issue has been particularly controversial among video game workers thanks to the volatility of the industry and its lack of a centralized workforce. Many of 2023's biggest video game hits, such as Marvel's Spider-Man 2 from Insomniac Games, were developed remotely. Rockstar's in the final stretch of developing Grand Theft Auto 6, hinting at a possible early 2025 launch. With this, we might anticipate the release of a second trailer, along with screenshots and more teasers in the coming months. While fans rejoice, this could mean extra pressure for Rockstar Games staff. I'll be discussing the recent developments in the GTA 6 mapping project. We'll delve into the latest additions, including new locations featured in Trailer 1, adjustments to existing locations, refinements in certain areas, and exciting discoveries from the latest trailer, such as the yacht interior, surfboards, princess robot bubblegum, and more. Let's start by examining the mapping project itself. It's been some time since our last update on this front, and there have been notable changes to the map since then. This iteration represents the most recent version of the GTA 6 mapping project, spearheaded by Dupi's Zero R. Below, you'll find a roster of individuals who have contributed to this endeavor, and it's worth noting that this list has been recently updated. This project stands as the largest and most comprehensive effort within the fan community with the goal of predicting the map of GTA 6 as accurately as possible prior to its official unveiling. DuPZ's Zero R mentioned that there's still an extensive list of elements to incorporate and modify, but for now, this update suffices. Anticipate further alterations to the map in subsequent updates. This iteration represents the latest version of the GTA 6 mapping project. Notable adjustments have been made to the legend and the manner in which various elements are annotated on the map. All markers now include viewing cones to indicate their general viewing direction. However, it's important to note that the angle of these cones is merely symbolic. Additionally, speculative location markers have been updated with red outlines to differentiate them from non-location markers. Furthermore, coordinate markers now display their corresponding clip names for easier identification. Changes have also been made to the naming conventions in the key section. For instance, you'll notice that the markers now include the names of the clips they are derived from. Let's delve into the alteration specific to Vice City. The angles of Rock Ridge and Stockyard have been tweaked to align with calculations slash evidence and to better match the coordinates. By observing the outlines, you can see that both the Rock Ridge and Stockyard areas have been subtly adjusted, ensuring a more cohesive layout. There's a noticeable improvement in alignment. A notable update to the map is this section here. Previously, absent features have been incorporated from the edges of one of Rock Ridge's mini-maps, and adjustments have been made to the water's edge in that vicinity, now depicted in dark green to indicate the genuine boundaries of this section of the Vice River. Additionally, several buildings in the Rock Ridge area have been identified, including the Rock Ridge Community Research Center, Miami Police Department, Venture Apartments, Orange and Pink, 7071 Warren Thacker Manor, inspired by Martin Fine Villa, Palace Cafe and Diary, all sourced from leaks. 
Furthermore, there are two speculative markers outlined in red, representing locations from the trailer. One in Rockridge is speculated to be the Hammer Hamlet Ladies location, while the other marks the high roller scene from the trailer. You can find the timestamps for both scenes on the map. Updates have been made to the route of the I-404, incorporating new evidence. This includes adjustments in Vice Beach and the positioning of the road near Rock Ridge. Notably, there have been alterations to the highway section near the airport. Additionally, speculative terrain and building positions in Washington Beach have been revised to align more closely with the evidence. Changes have been made to the shapes and locations of the Ritz-Carlton Bal Harbor, Akoya Condos, and Jade Ocean Condos. Furthermore, alongside the speculative road and landmass in the Bayfront Heights area, the Y Vice City and Gate Slash Continental Hotels have been included in the Vice Beach vicinity. Additionally, several minor adjustments and fixes have been implemented. Regarding the Vice Beach area, there have been additions of new buildings supported by recent evidence. These include 200 Ocean Drive, 260 Ocean Drive, 1043 Washington Avenue, Beach Park Hotel, and Council Towers North. Moreover, over at Brickle Key Island, two new buildings, Brickle Key 1 and Brickle Key 2, have been introduced. Additionally, corrections have been made to the names of the Tequesta Point locations, accurately reflecting their respective positions. Now, let's shift our focus away from Vice City. Firstly, an error regarding St. Joseph has been rectified. Previously labeled in purple, it should have been marked in red to signify that this name hasn't been confirmed in the leaks, but is either speculative or based on real-life data. Moving westward towards Port Gellhorn, there have been notable additions to the leaked industrial area opposite the state prison, along with improvements to the prison itself. Several speculative structures, highlighted in red, including a water tower and industrial buildings, have been incorporated, along with a cell tower across from the prison. Heading south to the Keys, significant improvements have been made. Adjustments to the landmass near the camera location, where the shot with the Dodal seaplane occurs, have been made based on speculative evidence. An airbase slash runway has been added, along with guard booth and barriers visible in the trailer. Additionally, two speculative buildings marked in red, as well as the speculative Naval Area Station, have been included. That wraps up all the updates to the GTA 6 mapping project. Share your thoughts in the comments below. There have been some significant changes with this update. But now, let's shift our attention to the discoveries made in the trailer. I also wanted to touch on these findings in this video. This marks the initial Reddit post. In the GTA 6 trailer, you can see through the yacht windows and see the interior even though it's very far away. However, in GTA 5, you can't at all see the interior even from close up. We will probably get inside the yacht and maybe even houses, or at least see inside it. In the shot of the Venetian island, it's evident that there will be a high density of yachts. It seems that the boats will be easily accessible, and based on the leaked shot featuring Jason on a boat from 2022, it's probable that players will have the freedom to enter, drive, and explore yachts like the catamaran seen in the opening scene of the trailer. Now, on to the next discovery, surfboards. Know a lot of people been talking about surfing, and while there's still nothing indicating it being an interactive mini-game surfboards, are in-game and seen in the trailer. Surfboards were in five, but only on the tops of certain cars, and a few static ones sat the beach. What do you all think? Will surfboards act as decorations like they were in 5? Or will it be a fully-fledged minigame? Personally, I'm not fully convinced yet, but if NPCs do have actual schedules slash lives, I can't see things like surfboards just being static, especially at the beach. My guess is we'll see NPCs bring their own items to and from the beach, including surfboards, but the interactiveness is still in question. From the leaks, there hasn't been any information indicating that surfing will be an interactive activity in the game. Nonetheless, there have been numerous articles discussing this possibility, like the one mentioned here. Major GTA 6 leak allegedly hints at surfing to debut in series. The upcoming GTA 6, officially untitled, leaks are becoming more frequent and interesting, with a recent one revealing that the upcoming title will include new water sports, such as surfing. According to a report by the Dexerto Gaming website, a leaker named Alix Venturas revealed on Twitter that Rockstar Games plans to improve the water physics in Grand Theft Auto 6 and will introduce several water-based activities. While the gaming studio has not officially commented on the leak, players are convinced, given that Grand Theft Auto 6 will almost certainly feature Vice City, a fictional version of Miami, Florida, known for its beaches and water activities. However, it's important to note that these rumors haven't been confirmed by either the official leaks or the trailer. It remains to be seen whether these surfboards will merely serve as decorations. Now, 
On to the next and final discovery I'd like to highlight in this video, which might just be your favorite. Princess Robot Bubblegum is confirmed to be in GTA 6. Just like the Righteous Slaughter game series, Princess Robot Bubblegum is seen on a shirt and will most likely return with more episodes. The series originally appeared in The Ballad of Gay Tony, and again with more episodes in GTA 5, making this the third appearance. Let's delve deeper into the scoop we've got about Jason and Lucia, straight from the game's artwork and that initial trailer drop. Seems like Rockstar's shining the spotlight a tad more on Lucia this time around. Not to downplay Jason's role, but Lucia's getting some special attention, you know? Alright, so the trailer kicks off with Lucia finding herself in what appears to be a detention center, or maybe some kind of confinement. She's sporting the classic inmate gear and hanging out with a few others. Now, it's a bit fuzzy whether it's an old girls club or a mixed bag. But here's the twist. It doesn't look like your hardcore, maximum security joint. More like a temporary pit stop. Then we see this scene with Stephanie, a counselor at the place. Stephanie's having a chat with Lucia, trying to untangle her situation. Stephanie asks why Lucia's landed there, and Lucia nonchalantly responds with something like, bad luck, I guess. It's got me thinking, maybe Lucia's in for something minor. You know, the wrong place, wrong time scenario, or maybe a string of small time scrapes. By the way, I'm holding a monthly giveaway for a PlayStation 5. You just need to subscribe and you're entered. Now, back to the video. So, Lucia's starting off in a bit of a pickle, but I'm itching to see how the story unfolds, how she got caught up in this mess in the first place. Rockstar's got us all on the edge of our seats with this setup, and I can't wait to see what twists and turns are in store for these characters. Taking a closer peek at Lucia in this clip, she doesn't strike me as too old or hardcore, you know? Surprisingly, she's not all cuffed up or tightly restrained while having a chat with Stephanie, the counselor at this place. Stephanie's vibe doesn't scream in danger while talking to Lucia, so maybe her time in jail isn't as intense as we might think. So, Lucia's got a date with jail at some point. But yeah, she's not going to be stuck in there forever, that's for sure. Let's shift gears to this artwork Rockstar's thrown at us. In that pic, Lucia's flaunting an ankle monitor. Now that's the kind of thing they slap on you when you're out but not really free. It's like they're keeping tabs on you, making sure you stick to a certain area, like your home turf or maybe a specific part of town, as set by the powers that be. Now let's dive into some wild speculation on how this whole ankle monitor deal might mix things up in the gameplay. Imagine Imagine navigating the game with that kind of electronic ball and chain. It's gotta influence how Lucia moves around or what she can get into. Maybe it restricts her to certain zones or forces her to lay low in certain situations. The possibilities are buzzing around my head. It's like a marker that says she's out of the big house but under some major watch. You see, when you've got one of those strapped on, it's like a 24-7 reminder that you're under strict scrutiny. It's like a digital leash telling you, hey, no funny business or else. Now think about how this could shake up the game's map dynamics. Rockstar might play a throwback card to the old GTA vibes, where you're restricted to certain parts of the map at the start. As you progress through the story, you gradually unlock more turf to roam. Picture Lucia stuck in a zone until she can shake off that monitor, whether she manages to ditch it by some gutsy escape or someone legally gives her the green light. Fast forward a bit and we spot Jason and Lucia in a pretty dicey scene. Jason's in the driver's seat, Lucia's riding shotgun, and they're peeling away from what looks like a scene post crime. A couple of cop cars are hot on their tail, lights flashing, and sirens blaring. Jason's got his hands tight on the wheel, sneakily glancing at the cops as they whiz past. Then, when they're out of sight, he shoots Lucia a glance that screams serious concern. It's crystal clear these two are linked somehow, tied together by that ankle monitor and whatever legal trouble they're entangled in. How's that for a curveball in the storyline? There's this air of suspense and questions lingering. What did they do? And how does it all connect back to Lucia's time in the slammer? The plot thickens, and I'm itching to see where this tangled web leads us. Let's zoom in on Lucia for a moment. You know, it's not giving off that classic jailbreak vibe. When you make a daring escape from the big house, you don't come out with an ankle monitor like you've been given a hall pass. Nah, it's more like you become public enemy number one, constantly dodging the long arm of the law. It's got echoes of that on the run feel from Red Dead Redemption 2, where you're always watching your back. Wonder if Rockstar's planning to revisit that kind of storyline here? But here's a thought that's been gnawing at me. What if Jason's got this noble quest to keep Lucia out of hot water? Could be, but there's this lingering sense that they've got some pressing reasons behind these actions. It's like they're in this situation either by design or due to some pressing needs. Speaking of which, let's take a peek at the next scene in the sequence. You've got Lucia holding a bundle of cash that could make anyone's eyes widen, stacks of 20s and crisp hundreds. 
And what's she doing? Nonchalantly turning away from law enforcement? It's like we're getting a glimpse into the aftermath of a successful heist. And then there's this sight, both of them, dressed up with bandanas and masks, keeping their identities under wraps as they bolt out of what seems to be a rundown corner store situated in the middle of nowhere. There's this air of confidence about them, but choosing a low-profile place like this hints at something. They're not doing this for kicks. No, it's like they're in dire need of funds. Now let's talk about Jason's wheels. It's not some flashy, top-of-the-line ride like you'd expect from Michael DeSanta's swanky tailgater in GTA V. Nope, Jason's driving an older model, something more modest. It gives off this vibe that they might not be swimming in cash. The whole picture seems to paint a story of urgency. Lucia's holding a stash of cash, they're hitting a low-key spot, and Jason's not cruising around in luxury. It's like they're pushed into a corner, perhaps strapped for cash, and pushed into some tough choices. There's definitely more to this tale than meets the eye. Let's dive into Jason and Lucia's ride. They're cruising around, making these slick turns and slides. It doesn't seem like they're trying to dodge cops. You can even hear Lucia a kind of squeal. She's gripping the car's side in a way that screams thrill ride. Looks like they've got a pretty upbeat and tight relationship. They're heading towards a motel. And guess what? Surprise, surprise, they're more than just partners in crime. Yup, Jason and Lucia are romantically involved. Now, Rockstar's not laying it all out for us, but you can pretty much read between the lines. Now, let's dissect this trust business. Feels like Rockstar's planting seeds for the storyline's ending. Trust can either be kept intact or shattered, right? It's like a pivotal point in a tale of two partners in crime. Maybe they'll face a dilemma where they have to choose between both making it out alive or going for a massive score, but someone doesn't make it to the finish line. Trust seems to be the crux of it all. And here's the kicker, the final scene. They kick open the door of this corner store. All confident, guns out, ready to hit the jackpot. The story concludes on that note. Now, let's switch lanes and talk about the trailer's song choice, Tom Petty's Love Is A Long Road. Interestingly, there's a tweet from Tom Petty's account expressing gratitude for having their song featured in GTA 6's first trailer. The song itself talks about the struggles of maintaining a relationship, how it's not a smooth ride, but worth the effort. So, GTA 6 might just be more than a crime tale. It's shaping up to be a love and trust story. I think Rockstar's aiming for their twist on a Bonnie and Clyde vibe with Jason and Lucia. That's pretty much all the scoop we got about them in the Grand Theft Auto 6 trailer. They didn't spill much, but we kinda got a glimpse into their journey, the hurdles they face, and this theme of trust that seems to run deep in their story. There's this one scene where it looks like they're gaining some traction in their journey. Jason's driving, Lucia's standing up in the passenger seat, and some paparazzi or somebody's snapping their pics. Seems like they've leveled up from their clothes to the car they're driving. So, at some point in the story, they might hit some highs. But knowing how these stories go, it could all come crashing down by the end. So, that's pretty much the lowdown on Jason and Lucia, our main characters in GTA 6. Can't wait to dig into their stories more. What do you folks reckon the GTA 6 plot's gonna be like? Which character are you stoked to play? Drop your thoughts in the comments below. And hey, if you like this video, a thumbs up would be cool. Hit that subscribe button if you're new here and want to stay updated on all things GTA 6. Don't forget to ring that notification bell too. The release of the GTA 6 trailer in 2023 has sent shockwaves of excitement across the gaming community. The anticipation and buzz surrounding this highly anticipated title have reached an all-time high. Fans worldwide are feverishly dissecting every frame, theorizing about the game's setting, characters, and innovative features. The hype is palpable as gamers eagerly await the next chapter in the beloved GTA series, poised to redefine open-world gaming once again. We're about to explore the intricacies of the Vice City mapping project, unraveling the mysteries of the latest map iteration. Join us as we meticulously analyze the details and draw insightful comparisons between the expansive GTA 6 map and its predecessors within the series. Our adventure doesn't stop there. We'll be immersing ourselves in the leaked information from 2022, unveiling a treasure trove of open world activities. Brace yourselves for a comprehensive list featuring every nook and cranny on the GTA 6 map, showcasing not only new additions, but also the anticipated return of beloved locations from the iconic GTA Vice City, as hinted in the leaks. Let's kick off this exploration by delving into the heart of the GTA 6 mapping project. For those familiar with it, this official endeavor aims to provide a scale-accurate representation of what players can expect in the actual game. The map sprawls across two major cities, Vice City and Ford Gorn, and every detail is meticulously curated from leaks and the official trailer. Now, for those wondering about the seemingly expansive green spaces on the map, it's important to acknowledge the limitations of our knowledge. The apparent emptiness serves as a stark reminder of the scarcity of information currently available. The top portion of the map, appearing cut off, isn't indicative of boundaries or future expansions, but is rather a canvas awaiting details yet to be unveiled. Addressing rumors about the map's size, 
Speculation abounds that GTA 6 will boast three major cities. While Vice City and Port Gorn are confirmed, the third city remains shrouded in mystery. There's a buzz that it might be Yorktown, potentially located north of Port Gorn. However, specifics about the placement of these locations marked in red are still elusive. Now, let's delve into the exciting prospect of exploring key locations on the GTA 6 map. These names, extracted from the official trailer and leaks, offer a tantalizing glimpse into the rich and diverse world awaiting players. Get ready to traverse the landscapes of Yorktown Red Hill Fairyland Forest, near Berryland, a whimsical Disneyland parody, Ambrosia Lake, Leonida, Lore North, Beaches Belleville, Ica, Vice City, Hamlet, Grass Rivers, and the enigmatic Gator Keys. As our journey unfolds, stay tuned for more updates, insights, and speculations surrounding the continually expanding universe of GTA 6. The road ahead promises thrilling surprises, and we're here to navigate it together. Now, let's delve deeper into the intriguing details surrounding Port Gellhorn. The bustling streets and structures around Hank's Waffles Diner, a focal point for a heist according to the leaks, spark anticipation for dynamic in-game events. The meticulous rendering of these locales not only captures the essence of the city, but also invites players to immerse themselves in the narrative-driven experiences that Rockstar Games is known for. Examining the speculative changes in Port Gellhorn, the notable relocation of the Port Gellhorn airfield suggests a strategic reimagining of the city's layout. This shift, coupled with the adjustment of the Port Gellhorn raceway, hints at a carefully planned urban evolution, potentially altering the dynamics of the airport's placement within the city. The industrial sector of Port Gellhorn provides a gritty backdrop, with the iconic United State prison maintaining its imposing presence. The inclusion of the pawn shop, prominently featured in the trailer, underscores the developer's commitment to integrating real-world elements seamlessly into the game environment. Venturing southward, areas like Second Fina and Belleville remain enigmatic, their constant relocation adding an element of unpredictability to their final positioning on the map. Ambrosia La Pearl, steeped in mystery, teases players with its undisclosed location, heightening the sense of intrigue surrounding these diverse neighborhoods. Our exploration now takes us into the heart of Vice City, where a substantial chunk of the urban landscape unfolds before us. While speculation abounds regarding the placement of red buildings and names, the gray structures, sourced from both the trailer and leaks, serve as tangible landmarks, anchoring our understanding of the evolving cityscape. Vice Beach emerges as a vibrant district, adorned with numerous hotels that were meticulously analyzed in previous videos, providing a tangible link between the virtual world and its real-life counterparts. Washington Beach, with its diverse skyline, beckons players with promises of new adventures, enhanced by the improved streets of Stockyard, Little Haiti, Rock Ridge, and Crosstown, as showcased in the trailer footage. Descending further into the enchanting realm of Grass Rivers, we come across the enigmatic district of Hamlet, speculated to mirror the charm of Homestead. Yet, the persistent red designation leaves us tantalizingly in the dark about its precise location. This region reveals fascinating land Marks, including a power plant nestled at Turkey Point and a sewage treatment plant, painting a vivid picture of the industrial landscape as gleaned from leaked footage. The presence of Grass Rivers itself, along with the mysterious Gator Keys and the alluring sundown, adds an extra layer of intrigue to this particular segment of the expansive GTA 6 map. A moment of appreciation is certainly due to the dedicated individuals steering the mapping project, whose commendable efforts grant fans an evolving and detailed peek into the GTA 6 world. Their commitment to accuracy and meticulous attention to detail foreshadow an immersive gaming experience, setting the stage for the excitement surrounding the official release. Now, let's delve into a truly mind-blowing comparison that has set the gaming community abuzz. Our gaze shifts to the juxtaposition of Los Santos from GTA 5, Liberty City from the iconic GTA 4, and the highly anticipated Vice Beach from GTA 6. The comparison not only highlights the need for potential adjustments in Vice Beach's size, but also emphasizes the extraordinary density and detail that players can expect. Acknowledging the observed need for a slight enlargement of Vice Beach, the visual impact remains nothing short of extraordinary. The comparison underscores the incredible density that GTA 6 promises, reminiscent of the lively streets and vibrant atmosphere experienced in the streets of GTA 4's Liberty City. Speculation regarding the buildings in Vice Beach, as showcased in the mapping project, heightens the anticipation, with the close proximity of structures promising an unparalleled level of immersion and detail, evoking nostalgia from the beloved GTA 4 era. This meticulously crafted map stands as a colossal playground, harking back to the bustling streets that made GTA 4 a standout title. The intricate detailing, the tightly packed urban landscape, and the anticipated density all point towards an experience that pays homage to the franchise's esteemed roots while pushing boundaries in the expansive open-world genre. The enormity of GTA 6, both in size and detail, 
heralds a new era in gaming. The astonishing comparison, showcasing the potential density and intricacy of Vice City, is nothing short of a revelation. A special acknowledgement goes out to the mapping community for their outstanding work in envisioning an entire Vice City characterized by a multitude of buildings. The level of density and detail promised is unprecedented and is set to redefine the benchmarks of open-world gaming. The concept of an expansive map allegedly featuring three cities elevates the excitement, presenting players with a gaming landscape of unparalleled proportions. Now delving into the realm of open-world activities revealed in the 2022 leaks, the thrill intensifies. With four confirmed activities and the potential inclusion of dice, GTA 6 promises a diverse range of immersive experiences. Golf, fishing, and races are confirmed elements that contribute to the dynamic and engaging environment that Rockstar Games is crafting. A particularly intriguing moment unfolds in the trailer, as Jason, visibly nervous, speeds away from a robbery scene, with Luke clutching the ill-gotten cash. In the distance, the iconic Top Golf in Doro makes a cameo, a real-world entertainment destination located in Doro, Florida. The climate-controlled hitting bays, HDTVs, and sports bar elements create an enticing backdrop for players to explore. This real-world integration adds a layer of authenticity, bridging the gap between the virtual and real worlds. Fishing, poised to be a serene yet potentially rewarding pastime, is expected to be available from various locations in the vast ocean. Races, an integral and adrenaline-pumping element of the GTA series, are set to deliver high-octane excitement that fans have come to expect from the franchise. Furthermore, a detailed list from the GTA 6 document unravels every location visible in the leaks on the GTA 6 map. This includes not only new and thrilling destinations, but also the return of iconic locations from the beloved GTA Vice City. The inclusion of familiar locales adds a nostalgic touch, creating a seamless connection between the past and the present within the expansive world of GTA 6. Now let's embark on a comprehensive exploration of some of the familiar locales, making a triumphant return in GTA 6 as unveiled by the mapping project. These recognizable names from the GTA Vice City era evoke a sense of nostalgia, rekindling memories of past gaming experiences. Leaflinks, Malibu Club, Washington Beach, Ocean Beach, Ocean Drive, Ocean View, and Little Haiti are just a few examples of the beloved spots that players will once again encounter in the immersive world of GTA 6. It's a poignant journey back in time as we rediscover these iconic locations, now reimagined and seamlessly integrated into the highly anticipated GTA 6 map. Venturing further into the extensive list of locations, our focus remains on the map, unveiling an array of intriguing places that contribute to the game's richness. Among these, the Jack of Seas nightclub takes center stage, having made appearances in both the official trailer and the leaks from 2022. While a detailed reading of every location is beyond the scope, feel free to pause the video and explore these fascinating spots at your own pace. From quaint small stores to the distinctive stone sculpture gracing Vice Beach, each location adds layers of detail and authenticity to the sprawling game world some of which have been exclusively revealed through leaks. Shifting our gaze to Port Gilhorn, a diverse array of captivating places awaits discovery. The car wash, soccer field, a bustling basketball court, the Ambrosia Farm, and the intriguing King Neptune statue are just a glimpse into the eclectic offerings in this part of the map. Sailing through the Keys, exploring underwater ruins, investigating an underwater research facility, and contemplating the mysteries of the Bermuda Triangle add an extra layer of fascination to the GTA 6 experience. With the unveiling of the mapping project, Project, the sheer depth and meticulous attention to detail that Rockstar is investing in the GTA 6 map become even more awe-inspiring. The possibilities for Easter eggs and hidden secrets in this expansive and densely packed landscape seem limitless. As we peel back the layers, the anticipation and excitement for the intricate world Rockstar is crafting only intensify.